Well, as you can see, it's it's dark out. I've been editing video all day. This is absolutely awful hard work. This is harder than shoveling sand or working retail. This is terrible. Look what I have to do. I have to sit here while this is rendering. Oh, this is just awful. Beth, it's awful. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Okay, that was the fun part. What I'm doing is making fun of some of our YouTube friends who consider this work and that it's really hard to do. Sitting in front of a keyboard is not hard work. I consider hard work something that's mentally taxing or physically taxing, not just sometimes boring, like waiting for a download. That's, yeah, boring. Do something else while you're waiting for that. I just I thought it was funny. But it did take a while. I I'm, I'm, had some confusion with Filmora, but it's, uh, it's working now. And if you ever have that kind of problem, don't call me. I'm, I'm terrible at this stuff. Hey, this is our existing battery bank. Um, we got three 200 amp hour batteries. This one we added when we bought the camper. Um, the two here came with the camper and they're about two and a half, three years old now and they're ready to come out and we're ready to move to lithium batteries. Uh, lithium batteries are a lot lighter that we know we've talked about that. Um, so, we're just going to start tearing this stuff up, get rid of the old batteries, and start putting in the lithium and figure out how that's going to hook in with uh, our existing system. Um, so here's the old batteries. We don't pull them out very often. There's really no, no reason to. There's not much maintenance can be done on them. Uh, so this original, we'll get this cleaned up before we put everything back together again. So just to recap, the compartment on the right has all the batteries. We're going to try and re reuse some of the existing wiring. Um, the compartment on the left holds the inverter converter, the battery management system, or not management system, battery isolation manager. We're also going to be adding a um, um, battery monitor so that we can tell where the batteries are at. And the whole really cool thing about all this is I have to do this in less than a week because it's going to take us two days to load up the camper with all the stuff that we have which is only going to give me three days to get the whole thing done and two days of shipping means we're not leaving Saturday so wish us luck in here is where the inverter converter is here's the inverter converter it's a Xantrex I think it's a 3002, am I right? 312 Freedom SW. And then back there, we're going to be replacing that unit. That is the um, battery isolation module that's not going to work with the lithium. And then we got some circuit breakers here, uh, 200 amp circuit breakers. I'm not sure where those are at yet. Those are control relays for stuff in the camper, fuses, basically this is where all the electrical happens. Our battery compartment is right next door. Uh, slide protection, and this is a transfer switch. So there'll be some changes in here as well. That big thing right there, this here, with the belt on it, is our alternator. It's a 120 volt. I think it was 275 amps. That's a huge sucker. So that's what's going to be charging those lithium batteries. What kind of truck is this, Mark? Freightliner M2 chassis. I think the motor is a 350 horsepower diesel. Cummings diesel. But all that stuff is we're going to leave. That's all existing. 
it's going to be staying just the way it is. But there's going to be a lot more work in those other compartments. So. Are you excited? I am. But it was free priority hazardous materials. We also got the um, the invoice for the order from uh, the battery manufacturer, including what was in the box. And so now we're gonna open that one up. One of them. Just wanna see what's in here before we get too far into it. We got the battery uh, battery shipped today. It came FedEx, um, hazardous materials. Uh, we got the paperwork here, I'm not gonna show it to you because it has personal information on it that you don't need to know. But it did come, you saw the picture of the FedEx truck. This should be the battery monitoring system. That's something we're gonna have to install. You know what this is, Beth? Uh, that's the battery monitor BMV 7112 Smart. <laughs> so in the other components, this is the um, battery isolation manager. This is going to take the place of a relay that we currently have right now. And again, as I understand it, this be the... Let me open this. Unless I'm using all the proper PPE. What's that, Mark? Personal protective equipment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> such as gloves, glasses, coming away with the knife. Um, this is a lithium battery isolation manager. What this is going to do, um, battery for the chassis, which is the truck battery. And this is the coach battery, which is going to be the new lithium batteries. Um, a ground is a ground. Ignition is going to go to a wire somewhere that tells this thing that the truck is on. And then this signal wire, as I understand it, we'll get into it, but the signal wire is, I think, what you would ground to basically connect this terminal and this terminal together, which means your battery for your coach could power the chassis battery, the chassis battery could power the coach battery. We'll see how that works. Nifty little item. Looks like it's pretty well made. So I could take the cover off and want to see what's in it. No. We'll probably avoid the warranty, right? Yeah. So at this point I don't think we're ready for that. No. <laughs> but made in USA. Good to see. Um, this don't know where that's made. But a little shot right here. It's got this. Okay. Oh, look, we're going to get a little wiring diagram. Very good. This will be easy. They did seem like they packed this stuff pretty well. When it came, on the, when it came in the truck, we didn't get the pictures of it coming off the truck. It was on a, a, a pallet, a regular standard pallet. There were four battery boxes. They were all wrapped in black plastic. This was, was stuck in between. It was very well protected. Um, and the shipping time was four to five days to get to us. And we're in Florida and the manufacturer's in Nevada. So it's uh, pretty quick. So that's that. I'm going to go grab a battery box and we're going to open up one of those and see what's in it. This one of the batteries, there were four of these on this kid. PPE. Now you can always tell if somebody's right-handed or left-handed by where the scars are. I have scars all over my left hand because I'm right-handed. Because you hold the thing with this hand and you cut it with this hand. Let's see what we got. Oh, 
Got some fasteners. Nice heavy cardboard box. Let's see what their whole line of batteries are from this company called Battleborn. So, you guys know what they are. If you don't, look them up online and we'll see how they work out. Okay. We've taken all the wires off and made a drawing and tagged the wires where we could. It's kind of homemade tags. But knowing that and where they're tagged and everything, if we get confused later on, we can look back at that and, and, and try and figure out what happened where. Um, Beth brought out the box and we put all our parts in there. Hopefully we're gonna be able to reuse some of that when we hook up the other um, batteries. So this is where we're at, this after about an hour. So yeah. about an hour in. And we'll catch up when we put the new batteries in. Yesterday, we got rid of the old batteries and we replaced them with these batteries. It's a lot less space. Um, disconnected the wires and labeled them. Today, we gotta figure out how to put this stuff in. This is a shunt that hooks up to the battery monitoring system that measures all the electrons going in and out of the battery bank and then does the math to figure out how many hours you have left. We'll get into that later, I guess. And this one is a battery isolation manager. <coughs> this is what links the two batteries together. What two batteries? the alternator, the coach battery and the chassis battery. Okay. You got two separate systems. This one starts the truck. This one powers everything in the RV. They're tied together so that they can each use the same charging system. If the truck is running, the alternator is charging the house batteries and the truck batteries. If we're plugged in, the converter is charging the truck battery or the house battery, whatever that needs. If the generator is running, whatever power is there, it's going to charge both batteries. This one is basically just tying the two batteries together via a little switch. This so is that replacing... It Go ahead. So, so it's charging one or the other. It can't charge both the house battery and the chassis battery at the same time, is my understanding. I'm not sure if it can or if it can't. Okay. I don't think it does. Okay. But what happens is it ties the two about together electrically, mm -hmm. is what it's doing. Okay. And then if the charge is coming in off the alternator to the truck batteries, it's going through here, through the alternator. If this is off, then it's charging through, you're not charging the truck batteries. You're just charging the house batteries. Okay. When the ignition is on, you're charging the house battery and the truck battery through the alternator. Okay. When the truck is off, you're charging the batteries through the converter because this is open. Right. So you're and just then, charging them through the converter. And the converter is saying, oh, I'm getting electricity from the post outside or from the generator or the solar panels, right? And the solar is tied into it too. Okay. Very good. And this little thing right here is replacing that thing up there. And that's what we have, that's one of my challenges today, figure out how that works. Okay. So, paperwork. Day two. Was this day two? Yeah, day two. What did we do the first day? We put the batteries, got the old batteries got out. Got the old batteries out. Okay, day two. We figured out what this is. And we replaced it with that. 
the battery isolation manager. Uh, I know it's upside down, that's the way it fit. We also put in the shunt for the um, battery monitoring system. Uh, did I say this was battery isolation, battery monitoring? We had to pull some wire, I had to order some wire, and just made a print of this whole mess under here, what's going on. Um, so that that's that. And then over here, we're really not much. Just ran, oops, get you in here. Punched a big hole through the side of the camper there to get the wires through. And just started doing some wiring and stuff. Put a little rack in here to hold the batteries in. And a lot of head scratching today, but that was a, a full day of work and we're just about done sun's going down mosquitoes are starting to bite today is monday we have till friday friday maybe less so we want to get out of here on saturday so hopefully everything goes together and it works good and that's where we'll be so tomorrow's another day Okay. Talent. Uh-huh. The talent. It's a the pain. Talent is here. The talent is a pain. <laughs> it's day three. Day three. <laughs> day three for those in Europe. Um, batteries are in. All the components are in. Um, we're going to give it kind of a test run today. I'm still waiting for one more cable. Um, but once we do the test run, I can kind of clean up some of these cables. Uh, I don't especially like that the links on these are a little funky, but electrically they're fine. Uh, it's a 4 odd cable, it'll carry the load. Um, we have three days in, one day of figuring out what was going on. Um, probably could have done the whole install in two days if we had all the parts and had known what it was that we needed. but. We're kind of in a time crunch here, so it'll be fine. But today what we're going to do is do a temporary hookup. I'm going to use a jumper cable to replicate the last uh, cable that we need so we can get the slides out so that we can start loading the camper up for our trip to California. So day three, so far it's been do-it-yourself, haven't had to call anybody, and we'll see how it goes. We got... 12 volts coming out. These are hooked in parallel. I labeled the batteries one, one, two, three, and four. And they're wired that way. We couldn't turn we could have turned the batteries the other way, but they didn't quite fit in the tray. And then we are thinking about maybe two more in the future. So Wiring them this way made sense. When we put the two more in, this wiring is going to go away. We'll get that the right way. So, um, what is, else is there to look at? Look, we got, I know this looks wrong. This is the wiring for the solar panel. Red wire is on the black, black is on the red. It's because the terminal on this is wrong. They put the red wire on the negative terminal, the black wire on the positive terminal, and then on the other terminal that comes out of the panel, they did it exactly the opposite, if that makes sense. Um, these two wires, I have no idea what they are, but they're back in place to where they were on the lead acid batteries. This is a sensor wire for the um, battery sensing device. What is it? What's it called again, Beth? Monitoring system? Yeah, yeah. And this is the other wire that goes to the truck side. These are the truck batteries. These are the house batteries. I'm not sure if this is going to work or not on the truck batteries because of the way they wanted the ground, but we'll see what happens. This is all buttoned up. It's all wired up. 
it works. Uh, I still need to set the settings on some of the parameters on the inverter converter. It's up underneath here. It's where we brought the wires through the bulkhead. It's kind of messy, but I don't think we have any other way to do it besides putting in some terminal blocks. And I wasn't going to do that. So uh, this is all done. This in here is all finished up. Just got to dress a couple of wires. And that's the mess we got to deal with. But uh, we did turn it on. And like I said, we got to set the parameters. So that's it. Uh, we should finish up tomorrow. That'd be day four. But we did kind of relax a little bit. We haven't really been pushing it. So I'm um, going to get the drawer back in and turn it on and see what see what it looks like what kind of parameters we have to deal with so. Everything's hooked up. All the batteries are back in uh, underneath. It really wasn't that hard to do. Um, made a couple of changes on the Xantrex and called up Battleborn. Um, they told me what to set it at for what we had and it's good enough. This controller isn't set up to do lithium ion batteries and set up to do AGMs, but make a couple of changes to a couple of things and It'll, it'll adapt. It's maybe not 100%, it's like 90%, but the efficiency of the battery is what's going to carry us over, hopefully. Uh, just plugged in the coach to shore power. We're basically just using a 110 cord and uh, trying to limit our use of electricity in the camper right now. So, go through a couple more tests and I think we're good to go. We're kind of up against the clock as usual. We'll be leaving here Florida in two days and we haven't really loaded up the camper yet so uh, it's been a rush 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 and I can't wait to get on the road and relax 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 because that's basically what we do on the road is that right Beth can I put you on camera honey or are you you busy she's busy she's she's really she's cleaning the refrigerator she's cleaning the fridge out you know if you leave them unplugged for a while so anyway that's that's happening and uh, all in all for putting in the batteries it's something we've been uh, wanting to do since we had the camper we tried to put in a, a bigger AGM battery bank and then that really didn't work for us and I think it mostly didn't work for us because of our inexperience and also because the uh, the coach kind of got abused before it got to us I think um, it was sitting on a showroom for a long time something you might want to consider a brand new coach to you is not necessarily brand new batteries can get drained down a couple of times um, stuff like that happens and when we had it in for service I know the batteries were dead and dying in the winter with no charge on them for at least three months so so we're getting rid of that we started fresh and we'll try and report back in a month or so about how it's going uh, that review is right here. It's about a month later. Uh, I'm going to insert this into the video right here. It, the batteries are well worth it. I definitely would do it. Uh, we haven't had any problems with boom docked. We spent about 22 days getting from Florida out here to San Diego. And it was just uh, no problems whatsoever with the battery. We boom docked and woke up with 65% of the battery left running the heater and uh, being comfortable at night. So definitely worth it uh, that's my report back haven't had any other issues with it we may not even have to add those 200 extra amp hours so uh, if you're thinking about it you're on the fence spend the money that's uh spend the money and i think it's going to be fine it's all going to work out so thanks for watching and we'll see you up and down the road